We currently live in the age of Tinder. <laughs> I'm sure this isn't news to anyone watching this, but with Tinder and Bumble and Hinge and all these dating apps and many hookup apps, hookup culture is all around us. Personally, I blame Sex in the City, but that's another discussion. All around us, we're being presented with these images and narratives around hookup culture. And it seems like everyone around us, everyone we know, is swiping left and right and having all these casual encounters. And this can be confusing to a lot of people who are not necessarily into that kind of thing. So in today's video, I'm gonna to respond to a retroactive Chelsea sufferer who's confused about her boyfriend's past in hookup culture. And she's wondering if maybe she should dive in and pursue a similar kind of lifestyle with the hope that this will cure retroactive jealousy. So I received a comment on a video lately that I thought was interesting. Kat writes, could you make a video on struggling with retroactive jealousy, but thinking maybe we should participate in hookup culture thinking it might cure the issue. Okay, wow, okay, first off, I have a lot of thoughts on this topic. I'll try to keep this short and condensed. The first thing I'll say is I've been in multiple relationship configurations over the course of my life. I've been in very strict, uh, strictly monogamous relationships. I've been dating multiple women at the same time. You know, I've, I've spared details, I've, uh, I've had some experience. And my guess is that if you have not had any kind of casual sex before, if you hadn't, haven't had any kind of casual sexual relationships, I'm really trying to keep this clean for YouTube. If you haven't had a lot of experience in that, and then all of a sudden you had some kind of casual encounter, the number one realization you would have is, oh, this isn't a big deal at all. I don't mean to say that it isn't a big deal in the sense of the moral implications or anything else, but I just mean, you know, casual sex, it's not all it's cracked up to be. It's often not very satisfying, it's often kind of shallow, it leaves a lot of parties often feeling kind of just drained and just un uninspired, shall we say. And there's a huge difference, in my view, between having sex in a committed relationship with someone you love and casual sex. Now, I wanted to lead off the video talking about this specifically because I get a lot of emails from retroactive jealousy sufferers who don't have a lot of experience with one night stands and hookup culture and all the rest, and they think that if they simply had some of that experience, that this would solve their problem, or that they'd get some kind of insight or enlightenment that maybe they didn't have before. And while it can be a good thing for some people to have a range of experiences so they have that insight and perspective, I think that can be good in certain cases. If you go out and all of a sudden start sleeping around or you go on Tinder and start swiping madly, whatever the case may be, I don't think this is gonna to lead to any grand insights into sex or dating or relationships necessarily. And I certainly don't think that this will make an enormous difference in curing retroactive jealousy. Insight and perspective can be good, but there are other ways to gain insight and perspective, such as talking to friends who've had hookups or whatever the case may be. Talking to a therapist or coach about the way you feel about these things. Participating in constructive internet chat forums with people who actually wanna reach out and communicate. I'm not talking about the victim mentality people. I'm not talking about the complaint message boards that I see all the time, constructive chat groups. All of this can be very helpful. And I don't think you should ever push yourself to have any kind of relationship or dating or sexual experience that doesn't feel like it's something you genuinely want for yourself. Another question I get from retroactive jealousy sufferers all the time is people who will literally, they ask me, should I break up with my girlfriend and go sleep with 10 other women and then come back to her? Because this will solve my retroactive jealousy, right? Wrong, unfortunately, most of the time. I promise you, I've received emails from men in particular whose past number of sexual partners is in the triple digits. And their partner has been with only a small handful, a fraction of that number. And these men are still struggling with retroactive jealousy. Retroactive jealousy is a very obnoxious and often illogical little issue. And just looking for surface level solutions, like just maybe I'll have some casual sex, or I just need to sleep with more people than my partner, or all these things, they don't really work. They don't really satisfy that urge. They're not going to be a long-term solution to this problem. This problem requires some deeper investigation, a more varied approach, and looking for the quick fix, such as sleeping with someone else or whatever, or cheating on your partner, is probably only gonna make things worse. It's not a long-term solution. You know, this is a maybe a contentious opinion, but I think that this hookup culture that we live in right now is doing a lot more harm than good to a lot of people. And I speak as one who has had some hookups, who's had some experiences on Tinder and all the rest. I think that for the most part, these experiences leave us kind of feeling a bit shallow and deflated and, and all the rest. 
I don't mean to project. Some people, they live that lifestyle and that's fantastic. But just about everyone I've talked to, including people with sexual partners in the triple digits, you know, their past is pretty colorful, shall we say. Just about everyone I talk to, you know, the common consensus is there's really no comparison between sex and intimacy with someone you love and a random fling that doesn't really mean anything. I recorded a video recently talking about comparing the hookup culture and comparing flings to eating, you know, drunk at McDonald's at 3 a.m., having a couple Big Macs, and sex with someone you love being more like a five-course meal with candlelight and this incredible experience. You know, sometimes people need both of those experiences to have some perspective. And frankly, I did. I needed a bit of that experience. I needed a bit of that perspective. But you can take it from me, and frankly, I think you can take it from a lot of people who've participated in hookup culture, that it isn't often all it's cracked up to be. It can sometimes do more harm than good to people. And if your motives or your intentions to engage in hookup culture are to cure retroactive jealousy, as one who has received thousands of emails from retroactive jealousy sufferers from around the world and who has the perspective and the knowledge, frankly, that I don't think anyone else has on this specific issue, I can tell you that just jumping into bed with someone new, jumping into bed with 10 new people is not gonna solve your problem. Overcoming retroactive jealousy requires a holistic, multifaceted approach, requires some deeper investigation. Thanks for your question, Kat, and thanks to anyone who's watching this video. If you got anything out of this and you'd like me to make more content of a similar nature, please take a moment to let me know by clicking the like button below, leaving a comment and telling me what you think, and making sure you subscribe to my channel to be notified of new videos moving forward. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you again very soon.